Hey guys, remember I told you I'd start responding to video to um, comments in the videos, and because I I don't really have time to do them all individually, I'm going to try to combine important questions and respond to them in in these videos and see how that works. <clears throat> One of the big ones I want to talk about today is the um, issue of the fertilizer crisis, which is an outgrowth of the oil crisis, actually natural gas and oil. Both. I mean, natural gas <clears throat> is used in the common process to extract nitrogen from the air and put it into a solid pelletized form or liquid form for fertilizer on crops. And if you cut off oil and natural gas and you have that policy, you know it's not an unforeseen side effect. You know that you're going to have engineered food shortages as a result. And when you combine that, with shutting down businesses all over the Western world uh, under the pretext of COVID and the pandemic, you know exactly what's going to happen. And when I'm talking about the rulers doing this, you know, people like Biden and the officials that we see carry out the orders. They don't. I don't think they make any of these decisions. They're they're not really competent to do that. So they've got bosses above them and above them and above them uh, and at the top levels there are people that we have never heard their names and above and I'm not saying this just as a guess I've run into some of these individuals and above that we have non-human entities that I mean it's too late to worry about whether I sound completely crazy to you and Bots are, and trolls are going to call me crazy anyway, so I might as well take advantage of it. Um, the orders for shutting down the Western world and eventually exterminating all the biosphere are not coming from the rulers that we see, but they're carrying them out because they've sold out to whatever level of crime they understand and Satanism at the top above that. Not as a, you know... Um, formal religion but as, as a reality that they're part of or that they serve and one of the orders has been you know during the pandemic the order was to shut down businesses and constrict everything into a small number of large uh, corporations and entities that could wipe out their private competition and remove easy access to people to, to have profitable businesses and ways to make independent income, setting the stage for the destruction of the Western fiat currencies and replacing them with a digital uh, central bank digital currency, CBDC. And the reason for that, it, it will be presented when all the other currencies crash as the convenient, wonderful alternative. And they'll just give it to you like a universal basic income and then get everybody using it <clears throat> but you don't want to use it if you have a choice because it comes with a system of total control of what you can buy and sell and transact and where you can go and what you can say and whether you can take your forced medical treatments or not you know what I'm talking about um, and you're going to have to have ID cards showing that you know this has been talked about by all kinds of great freedom commentators and for the most part I totally agree with what the ones that I know of are saying uh, Mike is Mike Adams has been doing a lot of great pieces on this uh, Alex has and quite a few others and that's true so when you look at the um, fertilizer issue in the larger context of the planned economic and energy shutdown you know, in America, for example, we're having gas prices that have doubled just recently, and they're trying to blame it on the situation in Ukraine, but that's not the reason for it. You know, that's the reason for maybe a little bit of it, but it, the foundation for it was laid the minute the current president took office and shut down the Keystone Pipeline, which was a horrible, you know, malicious crime against humanity to do that. And I'm an environmental 
strong environmentalist. I have been since before many of you were born. Um, but shutting off oil before you release the other free energy technologies is an act of um, basically mass murder, starvation, things like that. And that's what they're doing to the Western world right now. The rest of the world, the non-Western world, is, is targeted for termination as well, but in stages. Right now it's the West that has to be taken down because in most of those countries, especially America, there's some memory of this thing they used to call freedom. You know, in, in America, with all the faults of the millions of individuals there, and they're all at different stages of growth, like everywhere in the world, but the country is unique because it was founded on the idea that the only reason you have a government is to protect the individual rights of the people. In other words, the borders, which obviously ours is, has abandoned, it's aban ours has abandoned the whole thing. I mean, the, the government's supposed to protect the borders with um, organized defensive force to prevent invasion, supposed to prevent internal uh, mass crime by roving gangs or uh, big illegal corporations, which we have all over the place now. And when government goes corrupt and forsakes those duties and becomes integrated with the criminal corporations, that's what you call fascism. And that, that's, you know, the difference between fascism and communism is really not two ends of the spectrum. It's just looking at different facets of the same tyranny. Basically, it amounts to saying that it's for everybody's good that you're going to lose your rights and the government's going to take care of you out of its great benevolence. And it turns out that the government is allied with all the major criminals and organizations of the government are the criminals as Reagan started saying as president before he got shot and before he made some really horrible decisions that I think he didn't know about. I met Reagan in the 60s and that's another, uh, no, the 70s actually when I was in the university. So, and he was a good man, but like many other presidents that may have some good intent, he had huge areas of ignorance and relying on a lot of input from uh, corrupt advisors and things like that. It's pretty hard to find a president that doesn't fall into that or isn't outright evil. But I want to I wanna focus, because I'm not making this video too long, hopefully, on the fertilizer issue. I had a, a listener write to me and say, what about switching everybody over to organic fertilizers really quickly so that even if there's a planned oil and natural gas shortage, and you know, well, that's connected to fertilizer production, especially nitrogen. Because um, in the chemical farming industry, you have three primary fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It, it's a little bit different in organic farming. But in what they discovered um, in the beginning of chemical farming was if you supply those three things in synthetic form, you can pretty much get plants to grow as long as you spray a lot of poison on them uh, to get rid of the insects that are trying to weed out the plants that don't have the micronutrients and all that. The insects aren't there by mistake. They're there to try to weed out the inferior crops so that the good ones grow and pass on the right traits and things like that. Um, insects and other predators in uh, agriculture um, serve that purpose. They're not there to make you know, everybody's starved to death. It's it's kind of a symbiosis, but that's been mostly forgotten by the chemical farming industry. So this question was, um, if we're going to have a shortage, which is pretty much guaranteed now, of natural gas and oil, because I, last I heard, hundreds of pipelines supplying oil have been shut down by order of the Biden government since they took power. And that is a guarantee to destroy the economics of the country. But when you do that with shutting down businesses in the pandemic, saying it's to keep you safe from a virus, and when you make everybody uh, stay in their houses and stay away from each other and discourage human interaction, along with the uh, 
shortages and shutdown of the oil supply when you don't have a good alternative that's ready to go you're destroying the countries US or other uh, Western countries it's not a mistake it's not stupidity although you could say the people who are following orders to do this are not really too intelligent but many of them feel like they have to do whatever they're told to keep their job just like they take uh, forced medical treatments for the same reason and then suffer the consequences so right now we're watching the planned destruction of the US energy and economic infrastructure and the question was what about substituting organic fertilizers and help people switch help get in touch with every major farmer in the US shouldn't be a problem right there's a lot of those and uh, explain to them that they're going to get organic fertilizer instead and just switch over there are a few issues with that and I'm not discouraging the people who want to do that I think it's well motivated and it would it has a good vision of avoiding starvation and uh, crop failures and all that but it has to be realistic you know right now there's this moving infrastructure that is bringing fertilizer to those big farms and that takes a lot of trucking and trucking takes the fuel and fuel takes the oil to be refined into diesel and gas and natural gas well no natural gas is separate it's also a petroleum product so um, if you cut off those basic products that make those things like diesel and gas the trucks can't economically run and it gets too ex that gets incorporated into the price of the fertilizer even if you can get it and if you want to substitute you've got to do some things almost instantly you need massive production of organic fertilizer that does not it's not happening right now that would have to be ramped up I don't personally know a way I've got a lot of background in organic agriculture since 1965 or so but I don't know any way to quickly ramp up the production of organic fertilizers but that's not the main issue it's teaching all the farmers in the Western world how to farm organically and that's deep understanding it's like farmers have been taught in ag school or I, and I went to ag school for a while I know what they've been teaching and the necessity of poisonous chemicals and how it's normal to spray poison on the soil and spray poison on your food and then eat it and it doesn't hurt you because the government agencies have said it's safe and farmers actually have been taught to believe that kind of total nonsense because of the credentials of the people teaching it in, in the colleges and in the agricultural agencies and the USDA and places like that and what they don't understand a lot of them is that nonsense doesn't become truth if you have more credentials I mean the stuff that we're missing is so obvious and we're being fooled in such ridiculous ways it's almost unbelievable but the point is we are and um, if you need a, a switch from organic fertilizer I mean from chemical fertilizer to organic it's not just okay I'm gonna buy a different kind of fertilizer or <clears throat> excuse me some program is gonna give it to me you have to like learn organic farming <laughs> it's not it's not a, a two-page brochure that comes with the new fertilizer you have to restore the life of an ecosystem because the soil is like this giant universe of life it's a biosphere in itself and it's got millions of interdependent different kinds of organisms most of which are microscopic but the bigger ones are like earthworms and uh, mycorrhizal fungi and things like that that all interact and they've been killed in, orga in chemical farms because the harsh poisonous chemical fertilizers which also pollute the groundwater um, destabilize and kill the micro life and the other life in the soil that has to be brought back and that takes a few years um, even if you know what you're doing 
you can get something the first year because I've gone through this process with people. Um, but it takes a few years to re reestablish that life and it does come back. It's amazing. I mean, earthworms will show up out of apparently nowhere and the right fungi and things that you need will come back. But with the current knowledge that we have, it doesn't happen instantly. I mean, I'm open to learning how to do that if somebody knows and can demonstrate and not just talk about a theory. But the best I've seen beyond the so-called organic standard now with rock dust and all the things that you really should put in to bring the soil mineralization back like it was after the last ice age when the soils were rich in minerals, um, that can be done, but it's a process. And not only does it take some time to teach the farmers, but um, they have to want to learn. And most of them have gotten so brainwashed, I've talked to many, that they just absolutely believe you're crazy if you think you don't need NPK fertilizers. So I'm not saying that to be negative, but if you want to do some huge project like you're talking about with transitioning to organic uh, farming, basically, not just organic fertilizers, you cannot, you cannot follow the same farming procedures and just change fertilizers. It does not work because the old system leaves out so much that used to be understood with farming that the life in the soil is gone. It has to be re-established. Re, uh, and, and it'll come back, but again, you have to figure out how to do that quicker. There are good organic fertilizers, but they don't take the place of the practices of the farmer every day that have to be relearned. We need to teach the farmers how to do that, the ones that are willing. And it, of course, they have a good point that it has to be economically sound. You can't just get rid of poison and say, you know, kumbaya, it's okay if you lose money. That's really not intelligent and it doesn't work because the money part is not bad. It's supposed to sustain doing good things with the soil and the ecosystem and life in general and humanity. Money, money's not bad. And personally, I don't even think the love of... A, love of money is bad because if you appreciate money and you're governed by ethics you like money because of the good things you can do with it you can really do a lot of good with money and any of you billionaires out there who are willing to look outside your little box of training of some things that you could do that are massively important right now not just to help with our projects which I would appreciate but if you don't want to do that I would talk to you for free, I'm a consultant, and just tell you, look at all these things you can support. No connection to Lost Arts Radio projects, but just, you know, we need, in order to avoid catastrophe in the world right now, we need a parallel education system, we need a parallel farming system, like the person with the fertilizer question was saying. Um, we need a parallel health system. I'm talking about parallel to the destructive systems. We need to not wait for them to be totally gone and everybody starving and insane. We need to start the new ones now. And if you're a billionaire and you're thinking, well, I don't need to because I've got everything I need, you have to be more intelligent than that and understand that, you know, as the, whoever it was in, in the Spider-Man movie, I think it was the the uncle of Spider-Man, right? The first, in the first Spider-Man movie, he said, with great power comes great responsibility. So if you have massive financial resources, you have this idea that you can just use it however you want and, and have no repercussions. That's not true. It's a great opportunity. It's fine to take, it's, of course, good idea to take care of yourself and your family and the people that you're close to, but you have more than you need for that. So there are things that humanity, which is your larger family, they are literally your larger family. They're not aliens. They just forgot who they are. And if you remember who you are, you know that you're related to them and you need to help them. And I would love to talk to you and give you some ideas 
how to quickly and most efficiently do that because that's my whole focus right now really is that it's not there's no ego connected to it nobody needs recognition to do these things even if you're the billionaire yeah you'll probably get credit but who cares it's the result that matters so the fertilizer is a well-motivated idea to switch over to organic it's organic farming is the only really reasonable kind of farming there is and what you know I was doing organic farming and gardening before uh, the National Organic Program started in America and they don't own it okay they're they were formed with a lot of good people working in that organization they were formed to downgrade the definition of organic so that they could sell GMO and poison food as organic and people would just buy it anyway true organic doesn't get degraded it doesn't use GMOs it doesn't use hydroponics it uses um, a deep understanding like uh, some of the great teachers Steiners and, and others and others beyond that have had about the soil and the ecosystem and how life all fits together in this amazing network designed for health and mutual cooperation so in order to solve that fertilizer issue you've got to change to organic farming not just change fertilizers and you have to teach all these farmers we need agricultural schools started to take the place of these schools that are pushing poison that's a crime against the biosphere and I'm not saying I, I'm not interested in punishing people for that they don't know I'm interested in starting right now an alternative not just switching fertilizer that's such a incomplete picture you've got to switch the system so for the immediate present I think it's up to small gardening people to um, grow food organically at wherever they can at their home or if they're in an apartment in a city to find a vacant lot where they can get together with a group like um, who is the guy in Los Angeles really in, inspiring man I don't sorry I don't remember his name and um, maybe it'll come back Finley somebody Finley and he was t organizing community gardens in the um, urban areas of Los Angeles if I remember and other cities too things like that need to be started like today right now because that's going to be as much of a food supply as everybody can manage but switching over the big farms I don't see a way to do that you can't even if you had the money to buy them fertile organic fertilizer they would not have no idea what to do with it you can't just pour it on the ground and then you have an organic farm it does it does not work that way it's deep knowledge that takes time to not just hear and understand and study but practice and transition and in a few years your soil becomes healthy again and you say oh wow I mean how did I ever miss this what was the propaganda that I fell for you know or true organically grown crops are much more resilient drought resistant productive certainly way more nutritious than crops grown with poison and chemical fertilizer so that transition does need to happen but you're not going to get a bunch of people together to donate organic fertilizer and have it done that's that won't do it and I'm sorry I don't mean to be negative I, it's the last thing in the world I, I I don't believe in a negative attitude for anything if you want to accomplish anything good but you need to be aware of the real obstacles so that you can come up with solutions and you start with small gardeners growing as much food truly organically as possible in cooperative groups even in inner cities which Ron Ron Finley look him up incredible person really inspiring and that needs to be started like right right now and in the meantime learn to grow sprouts and things that don't take a huge amount of preparation in a jar or a soil flat and to use juices and there's all kinds of things you can do starting now and for switching over the big farms this idea of just giving them organic fertilizer that's not going to work and I'm saying that from somebody that has some background in this stuff but offering them 
education and this is where I need you billionaires to step in and you I know <laughs> you know you're there you're out there so step up and and communicate and let me know where you are I'm not trying to charge you anything I, I've got I want to give you the benefit of some experience and tell you even if you've used your money in really terrible ways up to now it doesn't matter if you can do some incredible things starting today and I really would like to see you do that because my only um, motive in this whole thing is for all of us to be okay that's it it's really really simple it's not sophisticated I'm not trying to sell some amazing new product or anything at least I don't have anything like that at the moment uh, I want us all to be okay as much as possible and people are unnecessarily being tortured and killed all over the world and if you wake up your sense of empathy you can feel it that's your family it's not some belief system or religion that that's really is your family <laughs> I, I can't say enough that it, it's literal and that's why you care about it and it's not to get uh, really into a negative helpless frame of mind because that guarantees that you won't contribute anything useful so be aware of the horrors but don't get pulled down by it and there are ways to do that and that enables you to see where you need to fix yourself first you always start there instead of trying to run out and reform somebody else we need to reform ourselves and that means get your health back get get rid of this junk about you know I think they call it normal aging you know that's not normal it's not necessary it's reversible there's all kinds of things you can do to fix that and get off unnecessary drugs wherever you're getting them from um, break your addictions not with willpower but learn about conscious ways to do that and those work you don't have to do psychoanalysis to fix yourself and go back to what your mother did when you were five years old or that's a complete sidetrack and it lasts indefinitely you don't need any of it so learn about deeper consciousness that we did do something for that we started uh, the beta version of planetary healing club in 2018 and it's now ready for people in any part of the world that want to get into this stuff deeply and I'm no master of any of it but I've got some experience and I've put some of it together and we'll share that with you live um, planetary healing club Doug and myself are there every Saturday and if you can't make it because you're in Eastern Asia and you don't want to get up at 2 30 in the morning or whatever time and it actually I think it's Western Asia that has that problem I'm not sure anyway whatever time zone you're in if you're if you work with us in planetary healing club then um, you can start instantly and you can use the recorded versions if you can't make the live meeting and communicate by email about things you want to see addressed in the meetings and that sort of thing it was the most powerful thing I could think of to do but we have to work on all levels so we're doing that for the internal level which really affects absolutely everything that you do physically uh, more than you can imagine but then we need to do things on the physical level and that's why we have projects a school that are was shown to build and a bunch of other stuff that's really expensive and we don't have the money for it right now so if you want to help us not only stay on the air but activate some of those projects and you've got resources um, we've got donate buttons on lostartsradio.com on that website lostartsradio.com it's right at the near the top of the home page and other ones and then also there's a subscribe star link that's u usable too or contact me if you're if you're a substantial donor and could help some of those things activate right away uh, as long as there's no strings attached that we have to sell our souls or anything which we'll never do um, then talk to me I mean, time is precious right now we're watching the destruction of not just the Western world but the whole biosphere including the humans the animals the birds all that stuff uh, people have asked me about geoengineering why don't I talk more? I talk a lot about it, okay? You just didn't hear it. I worked with Dane Wigington for about eight months and 
I agree with the comments that he's a really dedicated geoengineering, um, anti-geoengineering advocate, researcher, communicator, one of the most focused, dedicated people that I've seen. So I agree with those comments. And I was really fortunate to get to work with him for that time. So I'm aware of geoengineering, not just as it messes up the weather, and it's intended to wet mess up the weather. You know, I've observed it for decades, and starting in the 90s and in the 70s, I was working on other climate issues. And um, in my experience observing it for this long, geoengineering is trying to disrupt the weather. It's not covering up climate change or global warming or anything like that. And by the way, people want to fight about global warming and global cooling and all this kind of stuff. That's ego issues. We don't have any time for that. We have a planet that's under attack, the life on it. And the reason that they're doing the geoengineering is not just to mess up the weather. It's to exterminate life. And it's capable of doing that. It's not a minor point. It's the same reason that all the other parallel agendas to that, you know what I'm talking about. I can't go into them in depth because I'm on all platforms with this uh, video and I don't want it to get deleted. Um, but geoengineering is part of it and all these other things are part of it. The economic collapse that's being engineered right now and we're about to really accelerate into, that's part of it. The poison food is part of it. Um, so don't my suggestion, you do what you want, but my suggestion is don't, if you're focused on one issue like geoengineering or the forced medical, in, you know, interventions or uh, the poison food or the weaponized telecommunications frequencies, which are a threat to the whole planet, or GMOs, which could end the natural genetic database of humans uh, and animals and plants and everything. Don't sit there trying to defend your one issue being the only issue that matters. Cooperate. You know, see through the nonsense that tries to get us to fight with each other. Anybody who's of good intention is wanting the same thing, which is to bring back health and prosperity and freedom to the world. Because this place could be heaven on earth. That was the original design. And it doesn't have to... Right now it's turned into the opposite. And it's intended to turn into really the opposite, where nobody's going to want to be there, and then nobody will be there. And I don't think that should happen. So it's in your hands, because the biggest secret is you've got this massive power in inf that you don't know about. If you do know about, you're one of the extremely rare few that does. And knowing about it, by the way, is totally not enough. You have to put it into practice. And that's that's what really is the uh, you know, the criterion of, of judging the the reality and effectiveness of your spiritual belief. What does it do in real life? I'm I it looks like the sun is really wiping out the image here in the camera, so I'm gonna attempt to turn it a little bit. This is a super high-tech operation, right? I got a cell phone camera on top of an aluminum tripod, so hopefully that'll make it a little better. Um, what we have an opportunity to do here is to connect to the reality of the spiritual world. You know, this thing that people call God that all the religions talk about and try to make it into this guy that's going to torture you forever if you don't obey. The God thing is real, but not like that. It's it's beyond imagination. It's something totally incredible. It's it's not light. It's the source where the light comes from, and where all the beauty comes from. It's you can't even adequately describe it. It's not about justice. It's about unlimited, unconditional love, and that can flow through you if you are willing to do what's required which is not hurt yourself at all that's what we're doing now you know what what's required is to change away from that to learn what an incredible beautiful unlimited being you already are and we have these mind programs 
that block our experience of that. And those can be deleted. Mind itself can do that. And there, this is another thing we really go into in Planetary Healing Club. It's not just health and uh, environment information and stuff like that. It's consciousness. And again, it's not... If you have ideas about things in the consciousness realm, those ideas don't matter at all unless you can put them into practice and show solid real-world effects. You know, not just have some really impressive philosophy. Who cares about that? It's, and it's not about fighting about whose belief is right, who's brilliant, who's an idiot, all this stuff. That's garbage that our rulers want us to stay wrapped up in indefinitely. There's a reality, and it, it can be contacted by anybody, by you. And it's the thing that the rulers are the most afraid of, that you might do that. And so they're in a hurry right now to wipe us out before you do. And it's totally your choice. You know, you don't have to have these massive resources. You don't need five PhDs. You don't have to be a medical doctor. You don't have to have a 500 IQ or something. You just have to be have the desire to make use of the time, the brief time that you're in one of these costumes that we think are us. They're not us. They're incredible, magical, conscious costumes that have abilities that we forgot about. And they can come back. And that that's just waiting for us to be experiencing. So that's what I want to say. So in conclusion, I hope, well, I'm going to end this, and I'm sorry to keep you so long, but about the fertilizer issue, the, the idea of suddenly getting organic fertilizers to all the farmers in the country or in the Western world, or wherever they need it. It's a wonderful, you know, well-intentioned idea, but there are logistical issues that are gigantic, and you need the trucking to move the fertilizer, which needs the oil and the diesel and the gasoline. Even if you overcame that, and could pay for all the diesel fuel to truck the fertilizer everywhere. The farmers don't know how to use it. And it's not just, okay, one cup of organic fertilizer equals two cups of chemical fertilizer. It's not like that. You need a whole new understanding and harmony with nature. Organic farming is beautiful in the real deep sense, not what they've codified it into now at USDA. But the real ultimate organic farming is something incredible. And it does need to be brought back starting right now. But it requires much more than just handing out a bunch of organic fertilizer. That's going to go to waste because the farmers don't know how to use it for the vast majority. Uh, for the individuals that do know how to do organic gardening on a private piece of land, you know, a little piece of publicly available um, empty lot in an inner city or in your back or front yard or your neighbor's yard or in a group you know that has access to a certain place that should be started right now and it's not just the fertilizer it's the technique of what to do with the soil that needs to be understood and taught quickly and there are people who can do that so I support it I'm just telling you the reality of it supplying all the farmers in the western world with alternative fertilizer will not do the trick unfortunately so all this depends on a consciousness change if you want help with that we're doing it in planetary healing club and i'm personally inviting you if you're one of those few people out of the population that is ready to do the work involved it's going to be work on yourself and if you're open to that instead of focusing just on going and reforming everybody else then you're invited and uh, it's totally supportive environment there. Or however you want to do it. It doesn't matter. Nobody owns consciousness except for you. Okay? So you can take yourself to whatever degree of remembering who you actually are that you choose to. And I'm just... All I want to do is support you doing that. Because I know what this place could be. And it's in your hands. So uh, we're going to talk about other issues in some of the upcoming videos. You're welcome to send in comments, questions, suggestions. Um, and I still 
you know, of course, appreciate the people who just sent in comments saying, Richard, you're a complete idiot. One of them said, well, you're just lost in your own thoughts. Or, I, I don't care about the ones who say I'm an idiot or I'm not an idiot. Or, this is not an ego issue. This is uh, getting in touch with who we are issue. And then applying it in real life situations like to avert food shortages, stuff like that. And we can do that. It just takes a certain uh, motive and focus and willingness to start the change in yourself. That's not just philosophical, that's where it really has to start. And then your words will carry a whole different energy, even if you say the same words. The effect you'll have on other people is going to be determined by the work you do inside yourself. So I'm inviting you to start however you want. Support us if you want to. We really need money. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to do it without that. Um, I don't like to do commercials because I like to be able to freely tell you, this is a really good product, you know, I had a good experience with it, or this one didn't work, and not worry about why well, I want to sell 5,000 units so we can pay the bills. I really don't want to do that, um, but we need money. So if you want to donate, it's at lostartsradio.com, the donate button or the subscribe star link. And if you have major money, if you want to help us, talk to me. If you don't want to help us, talk to me anyway, because I don't care. I'll, I'll give you some free consulting where to spend billions, um, where it's really urgently needed. It doesn't have to be Lost Arts Radio. It can be so many other really urgently needed good things that are in the works but most of them don't have the funds they need so we need you know you billionaires we need you and we need everybody um with or without any f physical resources it doesn't matter the the resource that's stronger than billions of dollars you're holding right now and it's called consciousness and people don't even remember what it means they think it's some belief or something no it's real and it's practical application of it that's urgently needed. So um, let's see what we can do. The time I don't know how much time we have left in this chapter. You know, it's called your current lifespan. But we have right now. So I'm suggesting we use it. Okay. Anyway, I really appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And uh, stay in touch. And I'll answer comments as I can. Uh, in the course of these video series. Okay, talk to you soon.